okay so i have created an assembly where uh, you find a cam lobe and you have this uh, slider and then a spring okay so when i give prescribed rotational motion to this uh, cam uh, it as it is in contact with this slider so uh, there is a change in there is an eccentricity so due to this difference this slider will tend to uh, translate in this axis in minus x so this spring gets compressed so i am just going to showcase you how to give a prescribed rotational motion onto the cam so already i have launched this model in uh, simulation mechanical so this is how okay so what i am going to do is in order to just uh, show you how to give this prescribed displacement i am not going to consider this and this but the actual way is that we need to assign surface contact between the cam lobe the uh, whatever surface comes in contact so let me say i select this surface press control key select this surface right click and then if i go here i have this option whether it's an bonded or welded or free contact surface i just need to go click on surface contact so once it is uh, once it gets created you can just go right click go and uh, select on uh, this surface sorry just a second just do a double click actually here you need to uh, this settings has to be highlighted might be that is because we have not at mesh okay so i'll just create a 3d mesh i'm not going to refine the mesh here generate mesh it's always good to create the mesh earlier okay so this surface right click now you get the settings okay so now what you need to do is uh, the there will be some friction existing between these two components but still let us assume this as an uh, frictionless contact and this contact type has to be changed to surface to surface okay and then click on okay so but uh, here in order to just illustrate you about how to give prescribed rotation to this component alone the cam lobe i'm going to suppress these two components even again you are supposed to create a contact between this component and this component which could be uh, a bonded or else surface to surface okay so just going to suppress the unwanted uh, components so right click suppress again uh, suppress this component sorry and suppress and suppress a spring okay even after uh, doing this it's better i go just remix the component i'll just bring it to the center of the screen okay so these two components are not required it is asking for material simply uh, i go select a stm 36 feel as a material okay now to the main part so in order to rotate this uh, cam lobe we need to have a shaft inside might be that shaft is welded to this cam or else the uh, cam lobe might be having a keyway as well as the shaft should be having a keyway and there should be key in between so that the rotational motion is transferred from the shaft to the cam lobe but whereas here we don't have any such thing so how are we going to apply the rotational motion so uh, okay so in mesh tab you have this option known as joint okay so uh, click on joint now the selection mode is uh, surface okay so click on to the inner surface rotate it and uh, always check properly whether you have selected the right surface okay sometimes it happens that we end up with selecting a wrong surface now or uh, this is a surface click on add you have two options here you need to go and select pin joint not the universal you need to go and select the pin joint and then click on okay once you do this what happens is that uh, there's an imaginary shaft over here and there's an imaginary center too okay so uh, this is a center so i just go and change my view zoom in so this should be uh, much more better now okay so you need to go select select vertices so you have one single uh, this vertices at this end the other vertices at the other end okay so again i go select some view okay. so uh, 
I need to uh, fix this vertices first. So as it's already already been selected, I just select it and then I'm going to give a nodal uh, constraint here. I just go click on constraint. I'll, by default, I'll click fix. But now I need to see this is Z, this is uh, Y. So that side is X. So in X coordinate, I want this model to rotate. Okay. Whereas in other uh, whatever translation X, Y, Z and rotational Y, Z has to be completely constrained. So the only option for this one, only one degree of freedom which is available for this component is to rotate in X direction. So it could be either in... Uh, positive or negative both clockwise and anti-clockwise based on my next step so i click on ok again now the vertices that is still selected i go right click i go and uh, add and then select nodal prescribed displacement see this nodal prescribed displacement unless you create the vertices this rotation will not be activated so i go and click on rotation now it changes to uh, revolution. The previous video which I had explained was uh, related to transition. So this is rotation. So one revolution is nothing but uh, 360 degree. So I will just give uh, point for rotation. Okay. And then in X direction, it is by default, it is selected X direction. Again, here I am not going to speak anything about the curve that how you need to uh, give all this data. Let it be a just for the analysis let it be for one second and the load is completely uh, for one second so here load is nothing but 0.5 so for the period of one second uh, one second 0.5 rotations will be done so that is what this means okay so i just go and uh, click on okay now i given 0.5 rotation okay so i am not going to give any torque here if you want to give any torque even that can be done that is as simple as like what you have done with these two, you just go to uh, do right click and then give nodal moment and then you need to give how much amount of torque is transmitted. So that has to be mentioned over here. What if, if you don't give any torque? Okay. Still the cam log will rotate, but it will rotate only based upon whatever you mentioned in the uh, this thing, prescribed displacement. So it has to rotate 0.5, so it will just rotate 0.5 uh, taking, uh, not, by not considering any input torque from our end. So it just, its duty is to just rotate 0.5, that's all, okay. So, uh, so this much of data is enough to make this slope rotate. Okay. Then I enter into analysis, I see this button is still not highlighted, so I guess I am missing something else, so prescribed displacement is of 0.5, okay. when we create a joint you see here in, a specific, in the specification tree you see a new part which is nothing but the vertices and the forks uh, that are connected to the uh, inner circumference of the cam so what you need to do is go change this to beam okay and you need to uh, provide uh, what sort of uh, cross section are uh, these forks which are uh, uh, connected to this inner uh, circumference of the cam. So uh, I just go material, I can just go and assign any material I wish. So the system crashed and uh, I started the session again. So you might uh, find difference in the sort of uh, rotation which is in opposite direction maybe. Okay, so I uh, I said we need to just go this and change to beam. That is nothing but the forks which are connected to the inner circumference of this cam. We need to assign some cross section. So I just go select the edit element. Okay, just uh, click on uh, this J1 or anything just on this thing so that you have this option highlighted. Click on this. Go select the sort of uh, cross uh, this thing as round and give it as 2 mm, which is quite normal. Then go to advanced. Here you need to select this large rigid body rotation so that what happens is that when you assign this circular uh, uh, cross section to these forks, whenever this rotate, the exact motion without any slip is transferred further to this camera. I need to select some material. 
I just go select the STM 36 and then yes, okay. oh, assign me. So let me go see an analysis. Okay, just to uh, this is a trial run. Let me go to parameters. I'll reduce this number of steps to 10. Okay, then run the analysis. So this is just to explain how to give and prescribe rotational motion to uh, a component where it is supposed to uh, rotate. Okay. So main thing is you need to create vertices. You need to create vertices which has to be done only by the command uh, uh, joint. Okay. So once you create a joint, you will be able to select the vertices and then you will be able to give uh, this prescribed rotational displacement motion. At the same way, you also need to uh, constrain constrain the uh, uh, vertices. Now, see uh, the analysis has failed. It should be because I created uh, this surface contact, but I have not deleted it. So this should be the reason, I guess. So. So the analysis is successfully running now. So now you should be able to see this cam uh, rotating in anti-clockwise, step by step. So as I have given uh, number of steps as 10, and uh, the time is once again, it has not yet started. So let me pause this video for some time, unless the time step comes to uh, 9. Okay. So I'll just pass it up and I'll reset. So now the analysis is complete. So now you should be able to see the cam rotating exactly uh, 180 degree, which is nothing but 0.5 rotations. So I just go and uh, change, remove this uh, displaced point myself. Okay. So uh, you should be able to see it, but one the thing is that it's too speed. Okay, let me just. So each and every step you should be able to see uh, just keep on displaced. Okay. Now, so this is how you are supposed to, uh, what to say, give prescribed rotation. And also you can also assign uh, torque to it. So, so with this I end the... Uh, hope you got the point. You just need to create a joint assign uh, sort of uh, cross section to it so the api editor uh, kindly note whatever joint you have created it should it should be it should be a beam you need to assign a material the sort of element definition uh, that is where you assign the uh, cross sectional area okay. and then you also need to uh, select the rigid uh, large displacement option which is there here large rigid body rotation okay okay then with this i close this session.